we're back with the second part of my sketchbook flip through. This is my blue folder. So this is more representational of the creative journey I go through in my life, which is to say, take a technique or a concept, expand it and experiment with them in all the possible combinations that I want to test them on, seeing which ones I really like or what I learn from it, take that thing and then expand it again with you know experimenting with all the different combinations that I want to and so it's a process of one thing expanding shrinking expanding shrinking until I get to a point that I feel ready to do a piece then I'll do a few pieces and then I'll move on with the next concept or theory or or technique here I'm just experimenting on a rougher texture paper to see which colours in the palette I had back then granulated. And then I went through this massive thing of layering just two colours over and over and over each other. So this was Cad Yellow Light and Quinacridone Rose. I did that for many colour combinations. So I took this colour wheel and I might have skipped like a really similar class, but basically I'll take one colour and do the whole wheel with them doing this and then move on to the next one and do all of it. And as I said in my part one video of my sketchbook flip through, I can get really thorough in these things <laughs> and I have to try out every possibility. Which is also the advantage to using loose paper and putting them into folders rather than in bound uh, sketchbooks to do this exercise in because then you can work on lots of sheets at the same time so you know this doesn't take forever there's this much of it and I did it in one day in one go so I had lots of boards with these things taped down and I would just paint the whole lot and by the time I finished, you know, the last one, the first one would have dried enough to put the next layer down. So it's quite time efficient. And I just found these color studies interesting because I never really looked at how layering the colors would affect each other. Instead of mixing two colors on a palette, if you put each color down in layers, one after the other, it's a completely different effect and it, it creates the steps and these marks that are really interesting for me. I will flip through this really fast. <laughs> and then I think at some points I got bored of just doing washes, so I would do these more patterny stuff, which you'll see that later on became a uh, series of painting called Sanshoku which experimented with these brush strokes and layering and painting, layering three colors. So this was the beginning of me doing patchy washes rather than flat washes. It's quite good. Like that is beautiful color when you mount it like this, right? So, What's really important for me is to always put a mount on even experimental pieces just as to what it will look like framed because it can totally surprise you. It can go from rough colour exercises to just, you know, to like, oh yeah, that's a concept I could take and make pieces with it. And then what I did next was a book by Nita Leland which I will link down below. She gives you different kinds of three color palette combinations that you could use. So what I did was take each combination of three colors and did the same exercise as the two color, which was just one color dry, one color dry, one color dry, and just repeat that. I think I repeated like, the whole process three times. So there's like nine layers three layers of each color and there's three colors just to see like like technically it should make black 
or you know gray or, or neutralized but because that would require you to mix colors in different proportions whereas this is like the three colors in the same proportion and obviously some colors are more intense and therefore dominating than other colors so you actually don't end up with neutral quite often I think this is the closest I got to a neutral and it actually instead creates some really interesting colors and patterns so I'm really glad I did that and then I just started experimenting with ways of layering two colors down and let and more about movement and things and random patches and this was just like brushing on dry brushing on uh, the same color many times and then two colors many times and then this was doing the wave thing in layers but in just one color and one color again and then I did the two color combinations in layers in waveform for all the color combinations and then I think these ones and then I kept the best ones because some of them just didn't work at all and um, whereas these ones kind of layered up the best and then because I was working doing layers and discovering that some colors weren't layering up as well as others I decided to do a layering test where I just did very very fine gradations to see what colors could take layering and as others couldn't and I found that like ultra violet and ultramarine blue deep didn't layer up so well because it will start lifting after a while quite easily whereas like the quinacridones beautiful I could have carried on doing the phthalos more and more it just I, I just stopped after one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven layers and then what i did was try out the color palettes that you often get in color theory books which are like monochromatic analog uh complementaries and stuff and try it for all 12 of the colors i had so what i did was i created a palette just with the 12 colors of the wheel and decided to, to do all the color combinations that you know you normally find so this was monochromatic which was just take one color and then put a I think it was a neutral tint around it and then this was analogous which is like next to each other or three colors that are next to each other complementary which is like opposite and then these are trias so it's like three colors in a triangle and there's lots of different ways of creating trias so this um, I made these triangles from just the acetate sheet because there are lots of different ways of finding the uh, three color combination and I can get confused really easily <laughs> and whereas if I have this I can just do that go around without messing up the colors and this is the standard triad and this is the fat one fat triad <laughs> uh, this is the toilet skinny one so you can see there's no confusion to which color you should pick and then this is the little one so you just go around like this and so I find these really useful and I keep them with my color chart. So these are all the different triads that you can find and every single one of them around the color wheel. Didn't miss a single one. These were really interesting because I got to learn about how the colors combined on the paper and letting them mix was really interesting so like I really like this so I was really drawn to these two and as I said in my previous video I tried to just 
really pay attention to what I'm drawn to and expand on that and follow that rather than all the others. By doing such a thorough test of like all the possible combinations, I can say with confidence that I don't like all the other ones, I just want to focus on these for now. Whereas if you didn't do like all of them, then you're always fighting this feeling of FOMO, the fear of missing out, because you don't know what they're going to look like. So that's why I do such a thorough experimentations when it comes to color combinations. This was like another characteristics that I gave myself for my latest series. First one was in layering colors. Second was in layering colors in patches, which you saw it's kind of birth. And then this was like the birth of, I'm gonna work with these three colors. So there's many of these because I test all of them. <laughs> and you might like a different set of colors. I might like a different set of colors later on, which is why I'm probably gonna keep these triad samples because they're so useful as reference for, you know, when I get bored of the three colors I'm working with and want a different set of three colors, or I wanna go for a different kind of approach. These are analog complements, which is basically like squares around the color wheel, either square or rectangle. So it's four colors basically. And again, I did it for all the combinations. And then I did layering in grid, how the colors work together to form a pattern because I was interested in doing some grid work at the time, which I did do, I gave it a try, did one piece, and I was like, this is just way too much like accuracy and stuff, and it's not my style. So I didn't carry on with this, but it was really interesting to me to see like how four colors worked with each other and to mix and to mix again. And then from here onwards, it's just random bits of color testing that I've been doing. Here I was seeing how the quinacridone rose from Daniel Smith mixed with various different greens I had because some greens it doesn't mix well, whereas other greens it mixes really great colors. And then I did a sample with the two greens I really like the mixes of. And this, which I then did take and did the Sanshoku series with these three colors, and then it really didn't work because the two greens were opaque, and that's when I learned that uh, opaque colors aren't really for layering. And so that's how I ended up making the transparency video and the transparent palette video, and how sometimes if you want to do very specific things like layering, then you really need to pay attention to the paint opacity. <laughs> and uh, yeah, sometimes it happens. So then this was me trying to decide on the color range of the transparent palette, which you've seen me make in a vid earlier video and testing out all the different colors. These were, yeah, again, me trying to put together the palette, more transparency testing for that palette. And these you saw in my transparency video where I was like, two similar colors, don't know which one to take, then you kind of do testing to see which one's better for what you need and the couple of things I did were to mix the two colors with two colors I know I wanted to mix with and I wanted it to work well with. So that's here. And like I decided on Antwerp Blue over Indigo for my palette because they mixed much better with the Queen Gold and the Queen Rose. Like these colors were much nicer than here. So that really helped. And then I also wanted to be able to drop in water and make it bloom and stuff. So I tested that. Again, okay, same thing. I did that for all the colors that I wasn't sure which ones I should pick, just to see which one I should take. And also like to see if there were big enough difference to justify both of them being there. 
and then doing the drippy test here and then I also wanted to make sure that for all the main 12 colors from the color world that I have in my transparent palette I wanted to make sure I had something that would neutralize those colors properly for example I had phthalo green to neutralize the Queen Aquilon Rose but then it kind of turns into a more inky bluey color whereas Hooker's Green which I wasn't planning on putting in um, neutralizes it much better it's like a proper grey so I have both of these because I do like Thalo Green on its own but if I want to use a green to neutralize a Queen Rose then I definitely need this over this so that is the end of my sketchbook flip through for both of my sketchbooks sketchbooks I hope you enjoyed these videos uh, it was great fun to make and it was actually really nice to go through like these sketchbooks if you have any questions about anything you've seen in my sketchbooks then please ask away in the comments down below thank you so much for watching this video please like comment share subscribe and I will see you in the next video